Good afternoon, everyone. Can we hear? Can we hear? Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for attending this exciting announcement today. Can I have everyone take their seats, please? If I can have all of our podium guests come toward the front to the reserved seating and everyone else take a seat. Thank you all so much for joining together today for this historic announcement that's about to be made. My name is Patrice Bell. I'm Vice President and Chief of Staff at Xavier University of Louisiana. And we are so grateful that you have joined here today. And so as to be respectful of everyone's time, we're going to get started. I think I see cues from my staff, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. It is my great honor today to introduce President Ronald Verrett. President Verrett is the sixth president and second lay leader of Xavier University of Louisiana. He was unanimously elected by Xavier's Board of Trustees in 2015. President Verrett has spearheaded many initiatives aimed at improving not the ex only the experience of current Xavier students, but those of generations to come. And today is no more evident of that than anything he's done thus far. President Verrett is a biochemist and an immunologist. He's led the university through some of its most challenging times, including the COVID-19 pandemic that shuttered many universities, but Xavier remained open and safe and healthy. He is an avid advocate of STEM education. President Verrett was instrumental in establishing multiple innovative graduate and undergraduate programs at Xavier that support the institution's mission to promote a more just and humane society. He's overseen expansion of our partnership with Oxner Health, including these next steps we are about to announce today. And so without further ado, please welcome Dr. Reynold Verrett. Good afternoon, everyone, and what a wonderful day for new beginnings. This is good. I want to thank you all for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to welcome you to Xavier University of Louisiana. We are the only historically black and Catholic university in this country, and we are a unique jewel here in New Orleans, and we plan to do more for New Orleans. I'm honored to stand before you with friends from Auctioner to officially announce that Xavier and Auctioner are partnering to work together towards establishing a medical school here in Louisiana. <laughs> Our purpose is to remedy prejudicial and inequitable structures in healthcare in the United States and abroad, and to embark on a journey that advances health equity for all the peoples of this nation. The needs for physicians of color is great, African Americans alone are still only 5% of American physicians in the U.S. We all know that in 1910, the Flexner Report led to the closing of all medical schools associated with black institutions, save two. It set the foundations for health inequities that still afflict many of our black and brown communities around the country. And representation in med among medical practitioners is critical for our communities because representation means greater quality of care, improved access, and greater patient trust in the health providers and the healthcare system. For the many who are, were historically marginalized and still are. As an HBCU, and as an institution grounded in the premise of social justice, Xavier is uniquely poised to 
contribute to really improving and strengthening medical education and the formation of talent to serve this country. For decades, the institution has consistently led the nation in preparing African-American students who go on to become physicians and also scientists. The record of accomplishment forms a solid foundation for building this institution. By partnering with Oxner to bring this college of medicine to fruition, we will be addressing these important issues of representation. And by representation, we mean representation in practice and in healthcare delivery, and also representation in the research and the posing of the important questions required to innovate healthcare around the country. The founding purpose of Xavier is to contribute to the promotion of the just and humane society. It's been our reason for existing for a long time. By preparing students to assume roles of leadership and service to the entire society here and abroad. We have among us today several of these leaders committed to the common purpose. I would point out one of them to you, Congressman Troy Carter, who has walked these halls. We have our graduates here, and some of you, if you are any Xavier Rights are here, please raise your hands. Just a few, including, including Congressman Cassidy, Senator Cassidy. Let me note that Congressman Carter from the class of 1981, 1986, I'm sorry. I, I gave you a few years. I thank you profoundly for your service to Xavier and continued service to the state. Let me thank our leadership in Washington especially, Senator Cassidy, Bill Cassidy, or should I say Senator Dr. Cassidy. Thank you for your encouragement and vision. And to all those who are taking part in this great endeavor while lifting with us and, and walking with us. U.S. leadership among the nations indeed derives from its ability to marshal the talents and gifts of its diverse citizenry. We are committed to this goal here at Xavier in this effort. Together with this historic agreement, Xavier and Oshner have heeded the call to advance the health of this state, the nation, and the world. For generations to come, we have work that will continue and these, at when we are all gone, this will be here building and, sh and serving. So I thank you all for joining us today and for joining us in this endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Verrett. Um, next coming to the podium is our provost, Dr. Ann McCall. Dr. Ann McCall is our provost and senior vice president of academic affairs and soon to be president of another institution, but really one of the people who helped envision this thought of expanding our role in healthcare and this med school. So she is very important to this initiative. She's been with Xavier University for six years now, just about six years, and has been a driving force for expansion of academics, including having a critical role in establishing our groundbreaking physician's assistant program. Just last year, we celebrated that first class of 37 graduates changing what healthcare looked like in Louisiana and beyond. Dr. McCall will always be our dear friend, and so without any delay, I will have her come to the podium. Thank you, Patrice. By the way, it's almost seven years, which in provost years makes you very old. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming today. I see so many wonderful friends of our university here today. It's a joy. I am the luckiest provost alive to be here today with you for this purpose. There is no place else in America and probably the, around the world to be. Two things from me. First of all, great relationships don't happen overnight. They develop in time. And you have to know who you are to be able to reach out and be with other people and to have a great relationship with them. One word about who we are as a university. When the Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament founded Xavier, you know, it began with what became Xavier Prep afterwards, right, in 1915. Although they were already using a university in their brochures, but I'll let that go. 
But during the time between 1915 and 1925, which we claim is our founding date, all of these medical schools for African Americans were shutting down around the country. So what did they do? We know from their papers what they did. They took trains all over the country to find out how to prepare the students from Xavier, we didn't yet exist in a four-year curriculum, to go to somebody else's medical school. What did it mean to get classified as a like 3AC or something uh, pre-med program back in 1922, 1924? They were intent on doing that because being a health equity leader is in our founding. It is in our DNA. It is who we are. Yes, we're a full service university. I'm a proud French literature scholar, but we have always been about health equity, always. And so we developed over time the College of Pharmacy in 1927 and the great leaders who came afterwards, and many of you know Dr. Carmichael, of course, who carried the torch forward for decades. And so it makes sense. What, are we, what we are doing today is no surprise in a certain way. It's bound up in what we've been doing for almost a century. Similarly, it is not overnight that you find yourself a great partner to work with. So we have worked with uh, healthcare institutions across the city and the state ever since we were founded. But we have always had a very special relationship with Oxner since it was founded. And in particular, for the past almost seven years, we have been working with them on what it means to change health outcomes in our state. What it means for us to become a state known for great health care and great results rather than to be at the bottom of the list of all of the 50 states in Puerto Rico. Okay, we want to change that. And so does Oxner with its Healthy State Initiative. So we were here with a smaller crowd, I believe five years ago, uh, when we signed our first MOU with them to start working on programs, and some of you were here. And then we started founding these programs, the Physician Assistant Program. You may not know it, but we partner on medical uh, clinical laboratory sciences. We will be, uh, at some point, able to talk about a genetic counseling program, and who knows what else. We are also part of the Oxner Xavier Institute for Health Equity and Research, with, with five separate groupings is working to change things. And I see leaders from Oxner and from Xavier here today who are part of that. Population health, uh, community health, policy. I always forget a couple of them, but you know, those are the ones that come out today. So, um, so it makes sense, right? We know each other. We've been working together now for quite some time. And so it's a natural outgrowth of a strong relationship in which we've had trust, in which we've all worked very hard, and I'm looking at our interim provost, uh, Dr. Marguerite Jaguet, who has played a key role for us in this, as well as, of course, our Oxner partners. It is normal, it is fitting, it is good that today we are announcing this new endeavor. So thank you for being here, and you know, with this announcement, the work starts. Thanks so much, take care. And, and thank you, President McCall, I guess I have to call her now. <laughs> so coming next um, to the podium is Mr. Pete November. He, excuse me, I'm out of order. I'm out of order. I saw the eyes from my staff. Coming next to the podium is Mr. Andy Wisdom, Oxner Board Chair. Andy Wisdom is Chairman of Oxner Health. He's an active philanthropist sitting on numerous nonprofit boards. Since 2007, he has served as the chairman of Oxner Health's Investment Committee, which oversees the system's investment portfolio and defined benefit plan. Mr. Wisdom. Uh, thanks very much. It's really great for me to be here, to see so many friendly faces and, and so many what I would think of as Xavier dignitaries. But I, I want you to allow me a moment of personal privilege, if you would. I want to, I want to highlight somebody who's not here. Uh, she spent her entire adult life working as hard as she possibly could to make Xavier University the best university that it could be. And we lost her last year. Of course, I'm talking about my cousin, Mary Keller Zervagon, 
who is the who is the daughter of my, my great aunt Rosa Freeman Keller. When I think back over the 80 years <clears throat> that the Freeman Wisdom and Keller families have supported Xavier University financially as well as Auctioner Health financially, this is the moment. And I know that they're not here with us in, in, in physical form, but they are looking down, they're watching. And if any of you ever sat at a table or around my cousin Mary with her knitting needles, you know that she's going to be clicking away, but she's listening to every word that you say. Thank you for allowing me that indulgence and, and that remembrance on behalf of, of Xavier and, and my cousin Mary. In November of 2020, Oxner's leaders announced the Healthy State Initiative, a 10-year vision to transform the health of our communities across our state. As we unveiled our plan, we shared that making a substantial impact on our communities could not be done without collaboration and partnerships. Today is the perfect example of what happens when people and purpose come together. Our relationship with Xavier has already made a difference in our efforts to create more academic, economic, and professional opportunities here in Louisiana. As excited as we are to help open a new medical school here in New Orleans, we're even more thrilled to do this in partnership with such a prestigious and important university. Creating new jobs and training new physicians is critical, but just as important is the need to build a workforce that reflects the values and diversity of the amazing patients and community members that we serve. We've made important strides in diversity across Auctioner. In fact, we were just recently recognized by Newsweek magazine as one of America's greatest workplaces for diversity. A commitment... <laughs> In fact, one of, my, one of my first acts as board chair was to, to elevate our chief diversity officer to being in that room because I wanted her in the room where it happened as we discuss strategy, particularly around issues like diversity. And, and I would just tell you as an aside, I think our program is spectacular. Uh, and I'm just so, so proud of it. And we've just only gotten started. Um, and so it's a really exciting uh, facet for us here today. So I can't tell you how proud I am to stand here today to see this vision realized. I want to thank the hard work of many of our incredible partners with Xavier. And uh, that is the end of my remarks. I appreciate the indulgence. But now it is my pleasure, as it is from time to time, to introduce somebody who's not only one of the most capable executives I've ever worked with, not only one of the most decent human beings I've worked with, but somebody who works so hard with a servant's heart to make things right, to get them right, to treat people the way they should be treated, and to always be elevating people, and to never be tearing them down. Ladies and gentlemen, Pete November. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And uh, Dr. McCall, I agree. What a great crowd back there. It's amazing. Um, Andy, thank you. Thank you for your support of this partnership and for your leadership of our board. Um, I, will, uh, I will indulge a little bit. Andy's a great board chair, and uh, he gives advice. And, uh, but usually Andy's like, hey, that's interesting, but I'll sort of let you work that out. I will say when we talk to Andy about this particular partnership, I got about a text or an email message from Andy other, every other day, how's this going? And I just say that to, to tell you this is how much that meant to Andy. And uh, it meant to our board, and I see one of our other board members back there, Bill Hines, and this meant a great deal to Bill um, and many, many of our board members. Um, President Verrett, thank you for having us here today on the campus, um, and thank you especially for choosing us as your partner. We are truly honored to be your partner. We know you had choices of other folks you could have done this with, and um, we, uh, we really are humbled that you picked us, and uh, we promise that you'll get every ounce of effort that we have to, uh, to make this school uh, your vision and make it incredible for the students who we educate. Um, we stood here four years ago in this room to announce the Physician Assistance Program. It's inspiring to see our work expand together again and to imagine the new possibilities that this medical school will have for the students it will teach, for the future generations of physicians, and for this community. Uh, we recently had our 80th anniversary at Oshner, and uh, as you can imagine, when you had that, we thought a lot about our founders, 
As many of you know, we were founded by five physicians, and so we get up every day trying to make them proud. And I can promise you that there is nothing that would make them more proud than the partnership that we're announcing today. So again, thank you for selecting us. I also want to thank the faculty and staff of Xavier for your partnership. We will work side by side with you in a collaborative way for this medical school to, to be a symbol of excellence in the nation and in the region. And um, I also want to thank our city and state officials who are here. I, I would name all of them. <laughs> and our national leaders who are here as well. Um, you have our gratitude. Um, you serve people every day, and we can't thank you enough for what you do. And um, just know that our vision for this school is to be another investment by Ashner and Xavier into the future of New Orleans and into the future of medical education around the country and to the promotion of diversity around the country as well. We want to work with all of you to build a stronger future for this city and this state and this region. I'd also like to thank many of our physicians who are here today. Um, you change and save lives each day, and uh, we appreciate so much what you do. And I could see many of their faces back there, and they are truly excited about this, and they're excited about teaching the next generation of physicians um, in our new medical school. Finally, I'd like to thank Dr. Swanee, uh, my friend, who's our chief academic <laughs> officer. It's uh, Leo's leadership, along with President Verrett and Dr. McCall, that we're standing here today. Um, and we are lucky to have leaders like them um, in this community, and we are blessed to have Leo as a leader in our organization. And it's my honor to, have to invite Leo up here to say a few words on behalf of Ashwin. Thank you. Ooh, thank you, Pete. Wow, the crowd does go back deep, deep. Um, man, it's truly a privilege to be here on this celebratory day, and it's a historical day. So proud of the work that we've done together with Xavier. Um, we're changing and saving lives, not just in this region, but throughout the United States. Today is especially meaningful for me because, you see, I'm a beneficiary of Xavier's excellence in STEM education. I completed my undergraduate physics course right here at Xavier University of Louisiana. Um, and so I remember walking, walking the fields and walking the halls. Um, this partnership is a monumental step in responding to long established health inequities by addressing the overall shortage of physicians in the United States. And the persistent dearth of lack of diversity among doctors. People ask me, you know, why? Why start this med school? Why start this partnership? And I want to give you three key facts why. Number one, there is a critical shortage of physicians in the United States. The AAMC says that by 2034, they estimate we will have 64,000 physicians short in meeting the needs of our community, 64,000. Two, African Americans and Hispanics are persistently underrepresented among US physicians, and especially in our region. Louisiana actually ranks last. The, the truth is, we've seen no significant progress in the last 30 years on that fact. Three, health inequities persist by race and ethnicity. At the same time, scientific studies and our lived experience, and as has been stated already, notes that when physicians and caregivers look like the communities they serve, patients get better care. The Xavier Oshawa College of Medicine will bring together two powerful forces to address these three facts. Xavier, a national leader in producing African-American graduates with STEM degrees, and Ochsner, a, pre a premier academic medical center with a long history of excellence in medical education. 
We are blessed that you chose us as a partner. We have demonstrated a track record of success in medical ed education, especially over the last 14 years. Oxford has been a medical clinical school campus training medical students in partnership with the University of Queensland in Australia. The Oxford Clinical School has trained over 750 doctors for the United States, and we will bring that expertise to this partnership. In addition, Osher has 31 ACGME accredited residency and fellowship programs, and we're building more today throughout the region, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, St. Tammany. And we currently train over 330 residents and fellows. And consequentially, as has been stated, Xavier and Osher have a long history of a collegial and collaborative partnership. Most recently, this was manifested in our development of the Joint Physician Assistant Program, which last May graduated its first 37 graduates. We continue to partner on several data science graduate programs. In 2020, we announced the Oxford Xavier Institute of Health Equity and Research, which is dedicated to understanding and solving for the health inequities that persist in our communities. Through these avenues, we're making medicine more accessible, more equitable, and more compassionate every day. Together, through Xavier Oxford College of Medicine, we will leverage and celebrate the power of diversity while providing a nurturing learning environment that creates more opportunity for underrepresented groups in medicine. We will provide a curriculum with a focus on interdisciplinary care value-based care, and to teach our students how we may live a life in service of others. To wrap up, if I could, with all humility, paraphrase the great Nelson Mandela in his Trafalgar speech on poverty. And if you allow me to substitute health inequities for poverty, Nelson Mandela said, Health inequities and the lack of diversity among physicians is not natural. It is man-made, and they can be overcome and eradicated by the actions of human beings. And overcoming these are not an act of charity. It is an act of justice. With your help, the Xavier Asher College of Medicine will help lead the way in this act of justice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sewani and all of the Oxner partners. So next, I'd like to bring to the podium my friend, my Congressman, Troy Carter. Troy, as President Verrett mentioned, is a Xavier alum and a trusted advocate for us and for everyone in the state of Louisiana and around the nation. Congressman Troy Carter is the U.S. Representative for Louisiana's 2nd Congressional District since 2021. In 2022, Congressman Carter secured more than $2.5 million for Xavier University of Louisiana for the development of a pre-health advising and STEM education center. This is very critical to us as we continue our work making sure undergraduates are ready to enroll in the medical school. And he continues to give back to his alma mater, to his community, and to the nation. Troy is not only an alum, Troy is a Xavier parent as well. So he truly believes in Xavier. He's entrusted one of his sons to us. And so we thank him for being here today and welcome him to the podium. Thank you very much, Patrice. And, and thank you all for being here for this incredibly historic moment. Um, before I was a student, I was the child of a student. My mother came back to school with six children and decided that she was going to get her undergraduate degree and she got it right here at Xavier University. Uh, Dr. Francis used to say that he would charge us double when we came back because we'd previously been here already. Uh, so as the proud son of a Xavier graduate, the proud uh, sibling of Xavier graduates, the proud uncle of Xavier graduates, 
and the proud son of a soon-to-be Xavier graduate. Uh, this is a very, very special day. Uh, the other title that I enjoy, not nearly as much as the father of, but to say that I am proud to be the congressman for this great institution. Today we celebrate a historic gathering, a gathering of a recognition of an idea and a vision that is long overdue. I want to thank Dr. Verrett for your vision, for your energy, for your commitment uh, to make this happen, uh, to bring it to a level that uh, is beyond most people's imagination. Thank Ashner for the role that you play in helping facilitate and have this dream manifested. Uh, Andy, uh, I happen to know Mary very well, as you know, and I know that she is saying right now, okay, Troy, sit down. <laughs> she's, she's got her crocheting needles, and she's saying, let's get on with it. We have work to do. So to, to Andy and his incredible and amazing family, um, who've been dear friends of mine my entire life, um, and we met each other and we we're both younger men, um, and it's, it's, it's powerful. It's powerful to be here today. It's powerful to join with my colleague, Senator Cassidy, um, the two of us who voted for the powerful $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, and as a leader in the Senate, I always take advantage of the opportunity to say thank you to Senator Cassidy. <laughs> Louisiana benefited from $211 million for HBCUs, 31 million for Xavier University. That's a big deal. It's the most HBCUs have ever gotten, ever in the history of HBCUs. That recognizes the strength, recognizes what we see HBCUs deliver and develop. And now what makes better sense than to have an institution that is known internationally, worldwide, for preparing, African Americans to not only go to, get in medical school, but to graduate and become practicing successful physicians. I think Xavier deserves a round of applause for that. A name was mentioned a moment ago that I knew when I was here, Dr. J. W. Carmichael. Everyone knew Dr. Carmichael because he was the guy that pushed them and push them, and many of our greatest doctors in the world know the great work of Dr. J.W. Carmichael. And now they will know the great work of you. They will always know the man that had the vision and in a very short time delivered on it. Dr. Verrett, we thank you. Ashna, we thank you. Board of Directors and all of the wonderful alumni out there, we thank you. The, yet, the best is yet to come. God bless. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman Carter. And now it's my great honor to, to introduce Senator Bill Cassidy. Senator Cassidy is a longtime ally of Xavier's and was recognized for his work and his constant advocacy for us to not only receive funds, but to come up to the Senate to make certain that our voices as an HBCU in his state are being heard. Um, he was honored with that honorary degree and was the guest speaker at the pharmacy commencement in 2022. Um, he is known for improving and transforming the lives of Louisiana families. In addition to his efforts as a senator, he is also a physician. And I think in every conversation President Verrett and I have had an opportunity to, to discuss things with the senator, he has said, we need more doctors in Louisiana. We heard you, Senator Cassidy. Um, having said that, he has been a Louisiana state in the Louisiana excuse me, he was also elected to the Louisiana State Senate and two years later was elected to the United States House of Representatives to represent, I think I have the wrong script staff, <laughs> so, but Senator Cassidy, thank you so much for everything that you have done for us and we do know that you are in the Senate. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, Troy, thanks for that nice word, man. I got something else for you too, brother. <laughs> um, let me address this in two hats. First, I want to address it as a physician who worked in Louisiana's charity hospital system for over 20 years. 
Uh, and my patients, whether they were white or black, and about 60 to 80 percent would be African American, but whatever they were, they were typically uninsured, and they had no other resources. This is an effort to bring resources to those who are without. An effort, yes. Our state has one of the highest poverty levels in the nation. And part of bringing folks all together is to address their basic physical and health needs. This is going to be a powerful method by which to do that. So first, I speak as a physician. Next, I speak as a senator. I speak as a senator who wishes to see opportunity for everyone who lives in our nation and our state. Uh, when I spoke at the commencement, I recounted uh, from my best friend in residency, uh, Eddie Holden. His father was a gentleman from St. Louis in time of Jim Crow who came to Xavier to get his farm degree, his pharmacy degree. And once he got that degree, he went out to California, entered um, an osteopathy school, and became Dr. Holden caring for people in one of the underserved areas of Los Angeles. And then I think of Oxner, those five docs, who left one institution to found another looking for better opportunity by which to practice medicine. And if you will, there is a marrying of a university that provides opportunity and of a health system that sought opportunity to now bring opportunity to these young folks who will become the doctors who go out and address the health inequity that is in our society. Um, you know how many seeds are in an apple, but you don't know how many apples are in a seed. And in this medical college, there will be the seed of so many things being addressed that we will, when we look back upon it 50 years from now, we shall say, wow, opportunity not just for the student who otherwise would not have gone to medical school, but also opportunity for that person who otherwise would not have had their health needs addressed. And because they had their health needs addressed, they had an opportunity to succeed in life as they would not otherwise have had. There could be no better fulfillment of the mission of both Ochsner and of Xavier. Thank you for allowing me to be with you. Thank you, Senator Cassidy. And now I'd like to have our New Orleans Council President, J.P. Morrow. John Paul J.P. Morrow was elected to the New Orleans City Council representing the Division II at-large seat in 2021. Morrow won a seat on the New Orleans City Council representing that Division II at-large seat and has since been a relentless advocate for policy change. Council President Morrow comes from a long line of advocates in the community many of whom have attachments to Xavier, and it is with our great honor that we ask you to come and give a few words. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. This is a, an amazing crowd. Uh, I do wanna note that I grew up down the street in Gentilly from Dr. Francis, and Tro will appreciate this. Several members of my family went to Xavier, and then Dr. Francis moved away, and then I didn't go to Xavier. And whenever I see him, I say, Doc, if you just stayed there a couple of more years, maybe I would have added to that, that list we're running up, paying the triple and quadruple you know, tuition that Mr. Carter was speaking about. Xavier has always been a tremendous pillar in the New Orleans community. Um, it has always been an institution that every black boy and girl in this city has aspired to attend. And it is so amazing to me that when you have an HBCU that, as Congressman Carter said, is nationally and internationally recognized home here, that becomes that beacon that drives kids through our various educational systems and keeps them home, that is something that we often discount. Now, I love this quote from Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm, where she says, if they won't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And when you look at the fact that there are 172 medical schools in this country, and this will be the fifth HBCU medical school, that is a tremendous accomplishment. <laughs> Xavier has never been shy about pushing the envelope. 
about making sure representation matters and that the people of our community have a seat at the table. I would like to especially thank Oshner because it is not often you have a partner of, of this size and magnitude that's gonna offer to help carry the chair to the table. And I really thank you so much for being here today and doing the right thing. Now, I wanna talk for a second as your at-large city council person and council president. We have fought in this city for years to build a bio-innovation district, which we just recently, with Xavier, with Oshner, with other partners' help, have finally put the bow on that bio-innovation district. That is all based upon the idea that we will continue to be educational leaders when it comes to technology and medical innovation. Having Xavier Medical School in this city will be such a tremendous catalyst for us to develop and lead the nation in research and lead the nation in developing new technologies to save lives. I would also be remiss as your council president and the person who's always raising your taxes to not say that we are not also extremely excited about the tremendous amount of investment that will occur with the construction of this medical school, with the tremendous amount of jobs that it will generate, and with the tremendous amount of permanent jobs we'll have by new medical professionals in the city of New Orleans. So once again, I wanna thank Dr. Ferret and Xavier. I'd like to thank Mr. November or Pete as I know him. Um, Dr. Verrett, every time I come here to speak in front of Xavier, and it could just be a little bit of an inferiority complex, I feel like I'm auditioning for a job. And when I walked out the house today, my wife said, are you speaking at Xavier today? And I said, yeah. I said, how'd you know? She goes, you're wearing so much tweed, you look like a college professor. <laughs> and I said, I've tried to be subtle with Dr. Verrett, but I think now he sees this is kind of an ongoing audition that someday you might want to... Uh, you might want to come offer me an opportunity to come speak to some young people here and, and you know. Thank you all so much. We're so excited to be part of the solution and part of Xavier's growth. Thank you so much, Oshner. Thank you, Council President Morrell. So just um, for a moment, I'd like any of our elected officials who have not been on the podium to please stand so we can acknowledge them. I know I see. Um, we have our newly elected state senator, Royce DuPlessis, who is a Xavier alum. I know that I saw um, Jeff Landry here, our attorney general. Um, state representative Delisha Boyd. Delisha, are you an alum of Xavier? Yes, yay. We're running the whole state. And I'm sorry, you're going to have to feed me a name. I didn't get it from my staff. I thought that was you, the state treasurer, John Schroeder. I think that we have representation from the Louisiana Board of Regents as well, Ms. Terry Sterling. Yes, thank you so much for supporting us. And please know that it is the size of the crowd, not our hearts or minds, if we do not see you in the crowd to acknowledge you, but we appreciate everyone in this audience, specifically our elected officials, state leadership, federal officials for coming to join us. We do have some light refreshments available um, in the back of the room, so we ask you to stay with us. I'm sorry? Oh, and Judge Juana Lombard. I know I saw her earlier. I didn't know if she was still here. Judge Juana Lombard, yes, is here as well. Thank you. Um, State Representative Boyd. So thank you all so much for joining us. And I believe uh, Judge Lombard is an alum of Xavier as well. So, so we, are, we are running the courts and everything. Thanks to everyone for joining us for this historic news. Help yourselves to some refreshments. Let's do some networking and start planning getting this baby open. Thank you so much. Excuse me, everyone, excuse me, everyone. One request, one request, if we can have any of our elected officials come to the front to take photos with President Verrett and the Oxner representatives. Elected officials, appointed officials, our attorney general, our state treasurer, please come forward. <laughs> 